honor to have uh, a lot of great partnerships, and one of those uh, key state partners is the North Carolina Division of Emergency Management. Mike Sprayberry has been the director of that agency since 2013. Uh, before that, he was deputy director and operations sections chief. Prior to joining state government, uh, he actually served in the U.S. Marine Corps, and thank you for your service, uh, and also the North Carolina Army National Guard. Uh, this partnerships between emergency management and the department are so critical when we get into these situations, and uh, it, there's always an open door, an open telephone line to Mike, and we are really, really fortunate to have someone of his uh, professional knowledge and skills in North Carolina, but Mike, unfortunately, I think a lot of this has been on the job training with all the disasters we've had in North Carolina, but uh, thank you so much for what you've done for North Carolina, and I'll invite you to the podium. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. So good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right. You know, my wife calls me the rambling man because I, I tend to ramble on a little bit. And I know the commissioner has got me under these bright lights, so he wants me to move fast. Um, I want to just say a couple of things before I get into my presentation. Right now, as we sit here, there's 1,130 households that are staying in motels in North Carolina. They are disaster survivors. That means there's several thousand people that are in motels, not hotels, not nice places. They've been there since October the 14th, and we need to continue to think about them. We're doing our best to find a, a housing solution for them. That's a result of Hurricane Matthew. Next thing I want you to know is that uh, your North Carolina Forest Service in fighting the wildfires in Western North Carolina, there was not a single home nor a single business lost to those wildfires. I think you need to give them a big <laughs> The other thing that I want to tell you is that uh, your whole Department of Agriculture is the best in preparedness, readiness, response in the nation. I'm not lying here. I'm telling the truth. These lights are shining bright. I'm being interrogated by the commissioner. So I can only speak the truth. But I'm telling you, everybody from the folks that do your legislative liaisons to the veterinarians to the GIS folks, uh, you know, the whole uh, division of emergency programs, I can tell you that they work daily with us to ensure that we have that strong bond and partnership so that when we do have all of these events that happen we are there as one team one mission and we're and we're doing it uh, and also thank you craig for your partnership strong partnership we know that we couldn't make it uh, without fema backing us up and so but the key thing to remember who we support they are the counties and the municipalities and all the people that live there that's what we're here for so let me see if i can click this along without uh, moving it so fast Y'all know that what our mission is, we prepare, respond, recover. That's what we do each and every day as we work to be better at that. And you know that uh, for that, um, basically you're constantly training. And I think it all showed up together as we work together during these events. Uh, that really paid off for us. But I like to call us the little agency that could. Uh, we only have 185 uh, folks in this agency, but what we have is we have all our wonderful partners that help us um, basically use them as force multipliers. That's what I like to call them. That's old military stuff. But they go out there and they do a great job. What gives us the authority to execute, and myself as the state emergency response team leader, is General Statute 166A is the law, but what it does, it brings everybody together. Here's all your state emergency response team state agencies, and you'll see uh, agriculture's on there, about the fifth one down. We're all together as a team, and believe me, I'm not walking around like some little general saying, Sharon, you're doing this, or whatever. You know, that's not how it works. We're partners inside the state emergency operations center. And so when we have something uh, like a highly pathogenic avian influenza that we might be looking at, we'll ramp up. And my mission is to make sure that uh, the state vet, who would maybe sit right next to me in the state EOC, my mission as the CERT leader is to make sure that, that the state vet has everything he needs to ensure a successful response, a successful mission. 
No egos. All the egos are checked at the door of the state EOC. We're all working together. Whoops. And so, what what in what makes success to any operation? Volunteers. We cannot be successful without our volunteers. I see some of them throughout this room, and there are great partners, and we so much appreciate them. What types of threats and hazards does the state emergency response team handle? All of them. We handle all threats and hazards. So the ones in yellows, I mean, it seems intuitive that agriculture would be involved in those types. Forest fires, animal disease, food contamination. And I can honestly say we have been involved together. You'll remember the Castleberry recall. Um, there's all kinds of things that we get involved with with agriculture. But if you think about it, if you look at all these things in yellow, agriculture is going to have a role in all of it. So agriculture has a huge seat in the state EOC. We work with them. Uh, Dr. Beck, Sharon, all of them. You know, we're working together. So. If you think that we don't have a whole lot of disaster declarations in North Carolina, this is just some stats for you. We've had 10 since 2005 of federal disaster decks. Uh, four FEMA Fire Management Assistance Grants, these guys know what I'm talking about. And then we have had 28 state disaster declarations. So as I brief the governor's office and the, the former governor's office, I, I tell them that the, the odds are in your favor that you are going to experience a disaster um, under your administration. <coughs> so right now for Matthew, you can see that we have 50 counties in North Carolina that have had a federally declared disaster. So does anybody know how many counties there are in North Carolina? A hundred, that's right. And so uh, that means that half of our state has been received a federal disaster declaration for this one disaster. So um, we also had four counties that received a fire management assistance yeah. grant. I believe Buncombe, Henderson, Rutherford, and Burke. So if you look out west, those people got hurt too. They, a lot of money got spent. What happened leading up to Hurricane Matthew? I like to say Tropical Storm uh, Hermine, uh, Tropical Storm Julia, Colonial Pipeline 1 and 2, um, the Charlotte Civil Disturbance, the riots. Um, also, and then we had Hurricane Matthew to be followed by the Western wildfires, and then we just had the January winter storm. Got a lot of activity. So this is what happened up to Hurricane Matthew. Um, I'm not going to go over everything that we did, but suffice it to say that we all activated the state EOC. It was a big activation. It's my job to coordinate all of the different state agencies and volunteer organizations active during disaster and to link up with our federal partners to make sure that we have the full spectrum of response activities to we're able to reach out and help our local partners. That's our mission, that's what we do. Wow, who would have ever predicted this much rain? So, for instance, in Cumberland County, they, they got a huge slug of rain the weekend before, then they end up getting about 17 more inches the weekend after, nowhere for that water to go. The places where you see that are purple, that's where huge rainfall amounts happen. So this was a heck of an event for us. And uh, you talk about 500 year uh, types of events, it seems like those 500 year events are like every couple of years if you ask us. And so we always plan worst case. It's not that we're negative, and it's not that we're depressed or anything like that, but we always plan for the worst case scenario. That's what emergency managers do. That's what I get paid. So this is a little bit of an example of some pictures, and you'll see uh, folks uh, all throughout the state, Lake County, Kill Devil Hills, on the Outer Banks, Fayetteville, and I think the sense that you get from it that it's all over the state. All the flooding that we had, all the damages that we had, uh, the response, I'm gonna tell you, we are a resource-rich state. We've got a lot of swift water rescue, we've got helicopter assets, and we've got ag too, right? Pain animal mobile equipment trailers. Um, you know we've got the docks that can go out there. They can they can come and rise to the occasion every single time. And then we have the recovery. I really like this picture of the trooper um, basically feeding a little deer. That's kind of like uh, sensitive side and hard side. Usually he's knocking heads, but uh, not really. I hope there's no troopers in here right now. Okay. <laughs> 
So this is a, this is a picture of uh, one of our mobile hospitals, and I had to show this picture, Mr. Commissioner, because there were babies delivered there uh, during the deployment. So, like I say, when I say that we have a very resource-rich state, uh, we're out there with medical assets, ag assets, everybody, and everybody's supporting each other. Talk just a minute about the Western Wildfire. That's a striking picture to me. I don't know since I've been around here, the fires that I've seen, that they've been fires of record for me. They may not be fires of total record, but it's been huge. What led into it, we had a very, very bad drought. We were in an extreme drought in the far western part of the state. I get a drought report every week. It gets delivered to me. I'm sure the fire guys get it too. And so um, we knew that we were, we were very dry. So then you can see in this map in the red spots, all the different fires all over the place. And these guys are spread super thin. I think we had two U.S. Forest Service Type 1 teams have to come in for us. You're saying, what does emergency management do for the wildfire uh, response? Well, it's just like I was talking about for highly pathogenic avian influenza or something like that. So now who becomes the technical lead may not be the state vet. It's these guys. They're the technical lead. So my job is to ensure that they have all the resources that they need in order to successfully respond to this hazard, which is the wildfire. That's our job. And also to support counties with structural fire protection. So I will tell you that the U.S. Forest Service touted our partnership and the way we work together as a national model, a national model. And that's, and that's really the result of these, these guys that you see right here. When they get up and start talking about cutting line, Think about being on the side of a mountain with a hand tool, digging line or raking leaves or, and all the different things that they do and the smoking. That's, that's something that I would last maybe 90 seconds doing. So what do we get the governor to do? Declare a state of emergency. We activate the state EOC. We get grants coming in to give us money. And uh, we get all the partners to support. And so uh, we did get two fire management assistance grants. And uh, there's the counties right there. But um, I want to tell you again, when you think about no structures burnt, amazing. Guys are heroes up here, folks. And we had 36 people that supported, uh, that we deployed up there to help. And um, these are some of the participating agencies that helped. And, and I just showed these to let you know that it's a team effort because when you think about fighting fires, it's not just, you know, these guys. It's also people, the other folks in agriculture, that are tracking, helping them track costs and, and providing all types of other resources, along with all these other folks. Everybody's, that's what's so great about our state team. And it really, you don't see that everywhere. Okay, so there's a, there's a, a place in Rutherford County, it's by Lake Lore, they call it Party Rock. It was called the Party Rock Fire. So I asked, you know, why do they call it Party Rock? And they just looked at it and they said, you know why it's called party. <laughs> and so, but, but look at all the different counties that sent uh, fire resources to go up and help these guys to make sure that houses weren't burnt. And I would tell you, if you look, there's many of those were from counties that got hit and were declared for Hurricane Matthew. They're still in the recovery, but yet they're reaching out to help their brothers and sisters in the West. <clears throat> 55 counties volunteered to help just for that one fire, keeping in mind there were several. Lots of different things, and I know, I know what you're saying, okay, well, what kind of assets do they need? They're just like fires. We're talking everything from radios to light towers, water, tents, everything else. And so just a few pictures to let you know how big of an operation it is. So you'll see that big tractor trailer right there. It uh, has an expando van on it. Um, and you can see that's where people were sleeping. They you know a good, a good climate controlled area. You see the Baptist men they were, and women, they were feeding up there. Thank goodness for the Baptist men and women with their big kitchens. Everybody's up there helping. I can tell you some of the people in those pictures were local folks. And then you look at the bottom right hand side in that picture, that's, and see how steep that is, and see how those, those guys are digging and make cut line there. So that's a picture of the, of the base camp from the air. And um, so I think that that is my conclusion. And I just want to tell you again, know how great the team is. Know how great your Department of Agriculture is and appreciate them. It's not like that everywhere, folks. 
Thank you so much, and God bless each and every one of you. I think you can see why we're so proud of uh, Mike and the job that he does. Uh, he brings it all to the table and he's that way in any emergency situation. So we are very lucky in North Carolina to, uh, to have him.